papal biographer of Benedict, Peter Zewald, calls Pope Benedict the catacomb for the Antichrist, and so does Sandro Magister, condemning the pontificate of Pope Francis. Ralph Martin says that this is all becoming clear. It is no longer ambiguous where we are going. And Ed Peters promotes and discusses the thesis of Cardinal St. John Henry Newman that the magisterium has been suspended. All of this begs the question, has the papacy itself been suspended? Today and other bombshells on the Guild family stream. Brother than in Christ, laudato Jesus Christus. In sequela, this is the Guild family stream. I'm Timothy Flanders with the meaning of Catholic. Jesus is king. It's a glorious time to be a Catholic. Glorious time. And we should be thankful that we are in the time of saints, the time of crisis, the time of darkness, when we can hope that the saints will arise. And we've already seen a miraculous saint arise with Sister Wilhelmina. And we pray that God may be merciful to us and turn away his just wrath in this time of crisis, that we may be worthy to see him. As Christ himself says, when he comes, when he comes, will he find faith upon the earth? If your faith is struggling right now, you're not alone. That's why we have this international community of Catholics against the Marxists within or without the Catholic Church. All of us supporting each other. This is the Munich Catholic Guild. So this whole Guild family stream is for you. We're releasing, as always, the first few minutes of it publicly to promote membership of our guild. But this guild is about praying together and supporting one another in a crisis, supporting each other as lay people, passing down the faith to our children. And that's what the meaning of Catholic is all about. It's about really incarnating and really executing the meaning of Catholic, not just talking about the meaning of Catholic, but trying to execute it. And that's what we do with the meaning of Catholic guild by the prayers and intercession of our lay patrons, uh, Mary and Joseph and St. Anthony of the desert. So today we're going to talk about some very hot topics. There's been some very somewhat shocking discussions. I think um, I feel like we're entering into new territory in the sense that uh, what's being talked about right now from mainstream sources is quite dramatic. Um, we've got the suspended magisterium thesis discussed by Ed Peters over at Catholic World Report. Obviously a mainstream source. We have uh, Francis unveiled an analysis of his latest appointments by Sandra Magister, talking, saying that Benedict was a catacomb, referring to the passage from Second Thessalonians, obviously about the Antichrist. Peter Zavald also. Uh, Peter Zavald also says that P Benedict was a catacon. And uh, we'll also discuss the latest from Ralph Martin. And he also has a stream that he put out um, saying that this is all leading towards this uh, this, <laughs> this insanity it, with, with the latest appointments that uh, seem to have been speeding up since the death of Pope Benedict this past winter. So we're going to talk about all those topics. We'll also discuss um, leading all of this into um, we'll, we'll touch on the set of a contest thesis, the Benny Plenis thesis and that sort of thing. Um, I do not think that those are necessary conclusions at all. Uh, and I'll explain why. And we'll also an, a, assess Cardinal John Henry Newman's comments about the Aryan crisis, about how the magisterium was suspended. And in actual fact, Ed Peters did not mention this in his article, but um, this was pointed out to me when I was in dialogue with Dave Armstrong a couple of years ago. He pointed out to me that after Vatican I, John Henry Newman actually clarified that particular comment that he made. So we'll look at uh, Newman's clarifications to his own comments as well as those comments, and we'll apply this all to the these controversies. And um, we will also, let's see. Well, and we talk about all of your questions, all the things you wanted to discuss as well. Um, we've got talking about monasteries. We've got some conversations about moral rigorism. Um, and then I wanted to announce before we get into the Gill family stream that the publication of a new book uh, by Our Lady of Victory Press, and this will be free to all the Guild members. 
If you want an advanced copy, it will be the advanced copy will be available next week. It's called Against Eastern Orthodoxy from the Greek Schisms to Roman Orthodoxy under Pope Francis. So this is going to be um, all of my journey, uh, a lot of which has never been written. A lot of the story has never been written. Uh, I've never really discussed it uh, publicly in writing, um, but some of it has already been out there here and there, um, essays and writings and academic discussions about various controversies regarding Eastern Orthodoxy and all of the Greek communions. Uh, we'll also discuss the Coptic communion. We'll also discuss the Syriac, the Assyrian Church of the East, the so-called Nestorians as well. Uh, there are, in fact, three different Greek schisms. Um, sometimes it's uh, falsely said that there's basically Eastern Orthodoxy and Roman Catholicism as sort of two lungs, if you will. Um, that is not accurate. That's, that's sort of misleading. There's really three different Greek schisms or greek communions which are in the east three different greek communions um the earliest one is syriac in fact but there is a, a, a connection with the greek catechetical tradition of antioch as well through uh theodoret of mopsuestia and so they're all sort of greek in a sense um but it is my the main conversion that i made to pope francis in 2013 was from Eastern Orthodoxy. And I just celebrated 10 years of being Catholic under Pope Francis. And so this is this book is sort of an homage, an honor to God's greater glory, a thanksgiving for his, his mercies, a testimony to his grace. And it's an effort to, I hope that I can help some souls out there who might be searching or questioning their faith in the Roman dogmas as a result of this pontificate of Pope Francis and might be tempted to think that they can enter one of these Greek schisms and that their life will be better and they'll find better answers to these difficult questions that we're trying to answer and ask in this uh, crisis that we face with this pontificate. So we'll delve into all sorts of different controversies and all sorts of different things that uh, I investigated over the years and as well as um, things over the past 10 years. So it'll be, it's the fruit of about 12 or 13 years of research um, and at the master's level, I, part of this is my work at the, uh, the graduate program in, at the Catholic university of Ukraine. Um, so that will be out, uh, that, so you can all get the free copy. Guild members can have a free advanced copy next week, God willing. And, um, and then that'll be available for purchase in August, uh, God willing. Uh, so you can actually buy that book. Um, but if you want a free copy, you can become a guild member. And then if you want the full stream, this whole conversation, this whole uh, private conversation among these guild members, among our international community against the Marxists, you have to become a guild member, meaningofcatholic.com slash register. So with that, let's discuss, the, get, let's get into our topics. So we'll be right back after these messages. Mm -hmm. 